Welcome back, financial investors. My name is Brent, and today we're going to be doing our weekly recap for July 29th through the 2nd of August, the 8th month of the year. 2019 is coming to a wrap here very quickly. Now, we're going to look at last week's changes for the week, all positive, up on the screen now. We're going to go over the four main indexes, stock futures, what stocks moved up or down here in the after hours, the entire S&P 500 performance for the week, what sectors were up, what sectors were down. Take a look at financial, semiconductors, home builders, oil, the dollar, silver, gold, bonds, and then finish it by taking a look at mortgage rates and then jumping over to Facebook and taking a look at what was posted this week. So if you are brand new to the channel, I cover the stock market, dividends, and real estate. If you're interested in any of those topics, hit that subscribe button below. If you do enjoy this video, find it helpful, hit the thumbs up. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, would like to share some information that you saw posted out there this week, drop it into there in the comment section. I do read and reply to all your comments and let's go ahead and get into the video. Now, last week was a really good week. We came out of a negative week here. Now up on the screen, I always post whether it's red the past week going into the future. So last week we had a red week prior, but then we had a very nice recovery jumping forward here last week. S&P up 1.65, Dow Jones basically flat at 0.14, the NASDAQ up 2.26, my portfolio up 2.02. .02. Now this week, we kind of jump into a downtrend. Now Wednesday, rates were cut by a quarter of a percent. Fed came out, what we were already guessing was going to happen. They cut the rates immediately after the rate was cut. Look at that sell-off, huge sell-off towards the end of the day. Then triggering happening, the automatic triggering, it just automatically reversed with these, you know, the algorithms that take place in the back of the market, just shooting the market back up. <laughs> and then towards the end of the day, had another little bit of a sell-off. Now, Thursday started pretty strong. And on Thursday, tariffs came out. President Trump came out tweeting that he is going to be enacting 10% tariff, you know, he's going to be raising tariffs 10% on oil and other goods from China. And immediately, huge sell-off there in the market, down 0.9% there on Thursday. Now, overall, <laughs> towards the end of the week, that is when we lost most of our percentages-wise. Monday and Tuesday were basically trending sideways, trending sideways, investors taking profits until that Fed announcement. A lot of investors were looking for a 0.5 to 1% cut. They only cut 0.25, but then they were listening for that news. Is the Fed going to possibly continue quantitative easing? Are they going to begin lowering the rate here in the future? How many rates are we looking for? A lot of investors are looking to see maybe the Fed's going to push it out two rate cuts or three rate cuts. A lot of investors are looking at three rate cuts by the end of 2020. So we'll see what takes place here, here in the future. But because of that, the market did sell off here. S&P down 3.10%. This is our second biggest loser. The Dow Jones right now down 2.6%. Basically the same news affected the market here. Down 2.6. This is actually the least down this week. The NASDAQ is the biggest. This is our loser this week. Down a whopping 3.92%. Now with tariffs being raised, a lot of those tech stocks got slammed. And that is what mainly affected the NASDAQ here. Down almost 4% this week. The Russell 2000 here down 287 And then we jump into our after hours. Now right now, not a lot of news out there. Stock futures are currently looking positive, but that can change at any time. We can see a few positions here in the after hours, such as L Brands up 4.10%. Dish down 4.88, and that's about Iron Mountain there. I know that one's pushed out a lot in the dividend community. I don't like that REIT, but a lot of investors do. Now, a few other positions here after hours. Now we can see your Dish down 4.88 in the after hours. Kind of taking a look through here really quickly. Again, IRM down 1.69. We saw that one Apple up in the after hours, 0.24. I know here towards the end of the day on Thursday, Friday, there was a bit of a sell-off. I believe Apple fell into that $203. It came up slightly here. Now at $204.50 and AT&T staying flat. Couple down here towards the bottom, Cisco. Cisco had a bit of a rough week. I believe it sold off around 3%. It is now here at after hours at 0.09. NVIDIA, 0.19. Bank of America, there's a financial in there. So financials are nice to see what they're kind of doing here in the after hours. And AMD, point. Four. Now, S&P 500, I like to use finviz.com. This is such a great website. I like to visit this website during the day. It is finviz.com. Up at the top, you can see the abbreviation or the thing. Click over here on the top on the right there, 
and you'll be able to see the entire S&P 500 by sectors. You have technology, services, basic materials, healthcare, industrial goods, utilities, consumer goods, financials, and over here in this area are your REITs, and then it kind of breaks it up by segments here or industries so very interesting and nice you know to look at very visual apple friday down 2.12 amazon 1.73 google facebook down almost you know 1.3 to 1.9 financials sold off pretty hard this week but they were one of the best performing sectors last week and oil oil i believe was one of the hardest hit sectors out there this week if we take a look at the one week performance we'll see here that there's a lot of red but we can see here Schlumberger Limited down 6.47, and Halliburger 8.81, and FTI down 10%. But overall, we can see a lot of sectors were hit. A few of them actually kind of popping up here in the in the positive here. You know, when you're looking at the entire sector, some of the main areas that kind of stand out are the REITs. You can see a good portion of these REITs. We have a public storage, PSA, a nice real estate investment trust which is within the public storage you know everybody needs storage during downtrends if they're trying to move or you're trying to go from buying a house to now just renting maybe you got to put some stuff in storage storage always do really well also utilities check out the utilities very positive over there even if there's a few mixed in there that are negative those are some of the underperforming utilities so you have southern company up 2.91 duke energy up to 1.39 eix and knee also up as well for the week and the rest of the market basically kind of selling off your amazon down 6.17 percent their earnings came out i forgot what was exactly wrong with them but down pretty good for the week google facebook down 5.37 google down four percent last week it was up oh, almost 10 percent i believe on the week that really helped out my portfolio last week JP Morgan and the rest of the financials selling off almost 3% or more with Citigroup down 6.3%. That was almost one of the hardest hit ones. You can see, you can see CMA down at the bottom down 7.09. So not a whole lot of sectors out there. If I was looking for some possible safety, I would check out healthcare, utilities, or possibly even REITs. I've been buying healthcare and REITs. And I haven't been buying a whole lot of utilities. There's only a few that I really like and hold, and that is the Southern Company. And I believe I also hold Consolidated Edison. Now, financials for the week, we already saw them get hit there as a sector. So financial XLF down 3.8% for the week. We also have semiconductors. This hurt the NASDAQ down almost 4%, down 3.86% for the week. And Home Builders, Lowe's, Home Depot, and many of these other brands out there dropping the whole sector down as a whole about 1.82. So not a huge hit as far as financials and semiconductors, but I like to see how this one kind of performs with the rest of the market. Now, the main highlight this week is Thursday here for oil. Oil slipped really hard here, and this is after the U.S. Federal Reserve diminishes hopes of uh, diminished hopes for a string of interest rate cuts and Sino U.S. talks ended. So there was some talks that were ended, and the Fed didn't come out that there would possibly be a string, you know, a one to three rate cuts by 2020 that was kind of getting floated out there with a percentage but the fed kind of didn't announce whether they would continue to cut rates or if they would just kind of leave them so they kind of left it empty and uh, empty handed and the market there sold off with oil down 6.06 on friday 1.46 percent on the week so a lot of positive movements here towards fed talk and then sell off the rest of the week there now the dollar dollar actually very surprised that it's getting stronger we started off the week around 97 97 as we ended last week now going into here we're now at 98 10 so they cut the rates but the dollar is getting stronger i know they wanted president trump wanted the rates to get cut so that money would get floated out there it would weaken the dollar but it's actually having a reverse effect where the past two weeks now we've had the dollar go higher and higher silver also selling off this week normally when the market sells off you'll see silver or gold positive here silver down 0.78 that was basically because they've been overextended here over the past three months huge run up for almost being down 14 dollars to now hit highs of 1550 here we can see here a high of 1559 and it was just overextended and needed to possibly pull back i could see gold coming back down into that 14 dollar range anywhere from 1450 to about 14 dollars 
gold. This is one of the positive ones here. I saw a lot of investors were looking at gold miners. Now gold here, ticker symbol GLD or BAR is another one. And this one's up 1.68%. So Fed came out, that basically knocked all the market. But look at the pickup here on Thursday, up 2.4%. Five day change of 1.68%. Bonds basically going positive. They did go ex dividend here on the 1st of August. So, if anybody owns ticker symbol BND, I know a lot of investors have been moving funds over to uh, bonds. I know I moved some of my funds, uh, funds around into bonds only a little bit, but overall, it just kind of creates some cushion. We've already seen the SP 500 trend year to date here. We'll see here that we've hit highs, we've been at this point for the past year and a half since 2018 we have essentially trended sideways this is our resistance point yes we broke over 3,000 but we're still trading overextended over these highs we don't have earnings that have pushed us higher many companies coming out there not either meeting expectations they're having year-over-year -year losses and revenue and earnings and right now it's just getting a little heavy so the market may retest these middle points of say 28 to 2900 here in the future it's just really unpredictable so a lot of investors are moving towards bonds just to kind of lock in some of their profits and then in some of their single single stock portfolios they're kind of keeping that in line so as long as they move their funds into safer positions that'll kind of blow any of the upcoming possible downtrend and then their dividends in the single in the single stock allocations those will continue to buy and pay out dividends whereas the rest of the bond market these go ex dividend just about i believe this is actually a quarter quarterly paying one but there's a few out there that are monthly so yep fed came out cut interest rates for the second time in a decade so really interesting and mortgage rates of course they you would expect them to kind of fall, but mortgage rates are actually up four basis points from last week. We were at 3.97, I'm sorry, 3.93 last week. We're now at 3.97. I got quoted a rate of over 5% on a refinance. So kind of interesting. I don't, I'm not going through any refinances right now. I don't even have a property that I would refinance at this moment, but I'm going out there, got approved for a loan to see what I could afford to borrow if I do get a you know a property here in the upcoming weeks and so so let's go ahead and jump over into Facebook cover some of the news and information that I posted over there I posted my Saturday recap kind of going over exactly what I'm doing here I also posted a couple apps so if you don't know I've created three applications completely for free to use over on the Google Play Store I do plan on getting an iOS license sometime here in 2019 that was one of my goals that I wanted to create five applications total within the finance area either stock market dividend or real estate related i'm working on a real estate application now monday i had an issue with m1 finance i didn't get my buy on m1 finance i was trying to target skt prior to going ex-dividend on tuesday well it did not go through so i emailed out to m1 finance they did reply back saying that it actually happened to another individual so i kind of just tracked it m1 finance basically said that they're going through a huge transition with their dashboards they unpaused it my trades went through on tuesday and i missed out on the x dividend date but oh well that is fine beyond me taking that hit i'm not even sure where this one is at now so it was trading around 230 so let's go take a look here and it is now trading at 100 and 77 days look at this peak right here this was not too long ago. I'm not able to be clicking anywhere. Maybe it's just broken here, but I'm not able to click. And it went from $230 to now $177. So that is a huge drop. That is just crazy there. Now I went out there and got approved for a loan of $1.2 I will never borrow that on a single property, but it's just very interesting to kind of go out there and do that. Now I do have a portfolio over on Weeble. It's actually doing fairly nice up 15.85%. Now this one has Sweston Energy down 29.25, but overall it's kind of an interesting platform. I would like to use this to do covered calls and learn options it's a really good platform i will be doing a review of this platform i'm just getting situated i would like to know more of option about options 
let's see, didn't initiate. Yeah, so my buys there didn't initiate. So I put out this whole video on Monday about my Monday buys, and it didn't actually go through, but I did the math there on what I could have potentially had for the week. And I'm not actually sure, you know, I bought, at, I would have bought at 16.45, went X dividend here on Tuesday. I'll let that position kind of marinate for a while and see how it goes here up until the next X dividend date. I currently have a few other stocks that I am targeting. So here's my last position there in Tanger Factory tanger factory outlet now dividend.com has a dividend assistant i thought this was really nice for a platform what i would really like to do is if they had a, if they allowed partial shares now my dividend income for my 12 month going forward is not 880 because i'm not able to put in some of the partial shares i'm not able to put in some of my funds into this or some of the other information this is actually slightly off and a little bit below what i would normally be paid off for a year kind of interesting now stocks that are going x dividend here in august that i am interested in or have in my portfolio we have pfizer coming up which was already passed around the first we have walmart coming up on the eighth that is this upcoming thursday we also have consolidated edison on the eighth as well thursday and spg simon property group i will more than likely be targeting simon property group here on my monday buys it is coming up on x dividend i'm down in that position just a few percentages and i can lock in right now about a four or five percent yield lower my unit costs, increase my yield on costs, increase my overall dividend income. So I'll more than likely be targeting SPG with upcoming X dividends with both CVX, Walgreens, 3M, Johnson & Johnson, Kellogg's. Kellogg's was down in my position, which I was planning on buying it. It actually blasted earnings out of the water. And we can see a huge change here within the week. Now, I'm not able to use my cursor here which, oh, there we go. I can use my cursor. So it went from trading at $57.85. You're going into earnings to skyrocketing over almost 11% here, ending the week up nearly 9.56% here. If we take a look from starting here on Monday all the way to the end, we have an increase there of almost 8% there on the week. So that took me from a slight loss of around one to three percent in the position to being up almost over five or six percent now so i'll have to wait a little bit on that one it kind of have a bit of a pullback Lockheed martin going next dividend towards the end of the month as well so if you guys have any stocks that are going next dividend here in august drop them into the comment section below i would really appreciate your feedback as to you know what is going next dividend what are you kind of eyeing to buy out there and Fed came out, yep, they lower their interest rates by 0.25. I thought this was an interesting clip. If you guys have watched it, it looks like it's got some engagement in there. And I made a video with no sound. Oh, this one had sound over on Facebook. So kind of talk about interest rate cutting on, on, on M1 Finance. And then kind of went over how it affected the entire S&P 500. Huge sell-off. The markets got auto-triggered. There was a bit of a pullback. My portfolio I lost some point four. 0.7% on the day, somewhere within there, and percent changes for, oh, the monthly recap, so I haven't done the total monthly recaps, I know for the month, okay, the market put on maybe around 1.3%, Dow 0.99, NASDAQ 1.77, Russell 0.51, mine 2.65, so that may or may not be right i think the russell is actually different the russell here i believe was different but i'll have i haven't checked that july dividends i made a whopping 42 dollars 27 out of the m1 finance portfolio this is the one that i kind of publicly tr track with you guys and it's just fun to watch this one grow week after week month after month this is the one that i really like to showcase that i started this portfolio back in 2018 yes i made an initial deposit to kind of boost the portfolio higher but then every week i've been consistently adding a little bit of capital every week in order to dollar cost average week by week over the past year and a half by doing this we've had a steady increase in dividends week after week and then month after month, and that has been compounding where we went from an average of $15, you know, $10 to $15 in 2018, to now we have an average of $42 every single month, $40 about is our average right now, 
for this portfolio. It's nearly averaging, oh, it's nearly making $600 in dividends with a year and a half invested. So that is the power of starting investing, investing in kind of solid companies that will grow and pay out dividends and it just allows you, it's, it's a lot of fun. I like to watch these grow. So there's a little post about tariffs, July portfolio update, total market there. I'm not sure if I posted the percentage that portfolio went up. Nice solid there, there on the day. I thought that was kind of interesting. NASDAQ futures, basically red, basically a red day here. So I didn't know what to expect on Friday. Uh, you know, we saw futures down, and that's exactly what took place with the rest of the day. Started down, continued ending lower. I got an email on Friday, just 17 hours ago. I know I'm recording right now. It's 2.30 in the morning when I'm recording this. But I got two emails from SoFi and Wealthfront, basically right after another Wealthfront lower the rate from 2.59 or 2.57 to now 2.32 and SoFi Money lower the rate to a 2%. Now I'm still using SoFi Money as my sort of checking account. I have a debit card. I'm still able to put that on my phone. I still use it for my YouTube business because I don't have a lot of cash that I use in my personal account because I'm actively moving it over into Wealthfront or I'm investing it. I'm doing things with that capital. But my YouTube money that I keep separate from my personal self, I generally, I can't, I don't pay myself that full amount into my own personal account. So keeping it over at SoFi makes sense for me, keeping it at that 2% rate where I have access to it with a debit card on my phone, etc. So that's fine. I understood that they were going to be cutting the rates. Marcus, Ally, Many others had already done that. In my latest video this week, this one was a lot of fun to make with my kid. Now, he is out there, and he really likes to do chores around the house. I don't actively tell him to go and do, you know, go do the laundry or go pick up this and X, Y, Z. He doesn't get paid for anything that we have to directly tell him to go do. If he has to go clean his room, take out the trash, and we directly tell him to do something, he doesn't get anything for that. But if he takes initiative, he sees a problem, and he can create a solution by doing something and taking initiative, then then he gets a quarter to a dollar depending on what he does. So if he notices that, you know, Thursday is our trash day and he goes around the house and he gets a big trash bag and puts everything into it and then he puts it by the door and he comes and tells us, hey, I collected all the trash, then we'll give him a dollar or so for collecting trash around the house and then we're able to, you know, he'll help take it out to the street or we'll kind of walk, go check the mail and stuff like that. He likes to do little things like that. So he he's really interested in learning how to grow his dough and make more money. And I think it's a lot of fun to kind of get your kids interested in that. And I'm kind of excited to kind of see how that kind of plays out. And then this week, the changes for the market. We have the S&P, again, down 3.10. Dow, down 2.6. NASDAQ, down 3.92. And my portfolio, down 2.02. I may be slowing my portfolio on the downtrend here. Not selling any positions that are negative, obviously. But... Uh, slowing some of my positions in the back end. So that is basically it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button below. I really do appreciate all the thumbs up. I appreciate all the feedback, the comments that I receive in these comments. It's a lot of fun to interact. If you haven't followed me on the channel and not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. I have three groups in there. I would really like to see all of you guys out here joining the communities that you're interested in. If you're just interested in stock market investing, not so much dividend related, but just overall invested in the market, talking about stocks, bonds, gold, silver, marijuana stocks, etc. Stock market investing, really good group to kind of join in, talk about stocks. Now I am building up other groups as far as dividend growth investing and real estate investing groups. So we talk about real estate, talk about posting deals, properties that are popping up higher, uh, different little things here. So if you're interested in joining these groups, definitely head over to the Facebook group or check out the links down in the description below and join the communities and let's chat, have fun, post, help others out and learn. So that is it for today's video. Thank you all for tuning in. If you have any questions, again, drop them in the comment section. I do read and reply to all of them. And that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.